In this episode, Evil Jared is going to undertake one of the most challenging and evil of scientific experiments, extreme sleep deprivation. Evil isn't allowed to sleep for 96 hours. Am I staying awake? Am I staying open or am I closing? We're going to show the effects of extreme sleep deprivation when you really need to be fit and highly concentrated. Balancing, running barefoot over coals, and a boxing match. Jared's tactic to stay awake, keep moving, keeping himself occupied, lots of light, while never stopping to rest. He's trying to trick his body into thinking the whole experiment is just one long day. And that works pretty well, at least over almost two days and one night. But during the second night, after 41 hours without sleep, Evil really feels the lack of sleep in a big way. So, I'm starting to feel pretty tired. I'm noticing how cold it is in this house, and I'm having a lot of difficulty concentrating on what I'm doing. That's because my internal clock uh, thinks I should be deep in REM sleep right now. The thing that really knocks us out is our internal clock. It is only as large as a pea, but it determines our entire daily routine. It consists of millions of tiny nerve fibers and is located in the front part of our brain. From there, it controls a programmed 24-hour rhythm secretion of hormones that makes us tired in the evenings and awake in the morning. Nobody can influence their internal clock. Not evil, not anybody. But he's doing his best to trick it with a lot of caffeine. Caffeine has a short-term effect and counteracts the body's sleep hormones. I'm pretty sure this is the first time I've ever drank one of these things without vodka. The caffeine from the energy drinks hinders the body's sleep hormones from taking effect. Jared manages to survive for the second night without sleeping. As daylight approaches, his internal clock switches to awake mode. <sighs> Ugh. No, it is now morning, and uh, although I was feeling pretty tired at night, the sun is out and my body is starting to get back into its natural rhythm. So, although overnight it kind of looked to me like 96 hours may be kind of tough to achieve, now that the sun's out and I'm feeling a little better, I think this may be possible. We want to see how fit evil actually is, or how badly sleep deprivation has affected him with an extreme equilibrium test. He already did this test a few days ago when he had had enough sleep and was well rested. Two whole days and two nights has gone by without sleep. Jared is now supposed to do a high wire act on a 10 millimeter thick steel cable over a gorge. How will the lack of sleep affect him? Well, after 50 hours of sleep deprivation, my coordination is a little compromised. I'm starting to have some mild hallucinations, and I can't remember any of the stars of my favorite sitcoms from the 70s. Is that going to be Evil's biggest problem? Probably not. He'd already reached his limit during the reference test with enough sleep. Okay, so... This is a little... freaky. Ah. Uh, I'd say we're about 25, 30 feet up here. A little bit freaky, it's not so bad now, but I can only imagine what it's gonna be like trying to do this after not having slept for three days. During a balancing act, concentration, body awareness, and equilibrium are key. I'll tell you what, it's a lot higher than what it looks like from the other side. The mission? As fast as possible, navigating the 15 meter wire over the canyon and back. Okay, that's that. Now, let's try and get back. <laughs> Even if it looks kind of wobbly for an amateur, Evil is doing a pretty good job. After two minutes and three seconds, he has reached the finish line in the reference test. A good time. Evil Jared was fit and rested during the preliminaries. Now, he has not slept for two days and two nights. How does a diabolic dose of sleep deprivation, and we can safely call it that after 48 hours, affect the body? Will evil even reach the other side? 
Oh. Seeing us out with the sleep deprivation, the first two things to go were my coordination and my concentration. I'm thinking this might be kind of a stupid idea. We agree. Completely overtired on a wobbly rope over a 15 meter deep gorge. A diabolical experiment for evil science. <laughs> that rock face looks really dangerous. After only a few steps, it's clear sleep deprivation has taken its toll. Holy shit. Oh. Uh. Uh. Oh. This near topple gets the adrenaline coursing through his body. That helps him because the adrenaline can compensate for the lack of sleep. Step by step, he works his way across. It's gotten a lot tougher. So why is Jared having so much trouble? Our sense of balance comes from the ears, brain, eyes, and muscles the brain immediately attempts to compensate an impending loss of balance when the smallest potentially wrong move occurs. Through the eyes and ears, the brain signals the body's muscles to react, all within fractions of a second. But after 50 sleepless hours, the brain is slowed down, isn't as efficient anymore. The brain's instructions to the other parts of the body come too late. Evil loses his balance again. It feels like not only am I mentally not entirely here, also physically. But the rock star pushes back against the overwhelming fatigue. After two minutes and 57 seconds, he reaches the exit. That is almost a minute over his pre-test time. Okay. The test demonstrates that in spite of the adrenaline kick, 48 hours without sleep is going to disrupt your sense of balance. When your coordination's off, oh, I was all over the fucking place. This uh, challenge, definitely a lot tougher on sleep deprivation. The next test is on the agenda. On the way there, evil falls into a hole. The adrenaline kick has subsided. The tightrope walk took a lot out of him. His body needs to regenerate. That means he needs sleep. But that is not allowed during this diabolical experiment. The next test is on the agenda, a test requiring full concentration. After 55 hours of being awake, he has to do the hot coals walk. Great fire. Another challenge that's gonna require great concentration and a focus on technique. And uh, even at the times when it's not lapsing into brief moments of REM sleep, my brain's working about as well as a marshmallow, so. This could get kind of painful for me. This test requires extreme willpower and a very special running technique. The only way to survive the hot coals without burning his feet. No problem when well rested. Well, like a lot of the other stuff I've been doing, uh, this requires concentration and mental focus, which is fine going into it uh, on a full night's sleep. After being awake for a few days. Mental coach Zancha Fecha fires evil up again. The first time he walked over hot coals, it went without a hitch, but now he has problems before it even starts. What? Hello, hello. So, let's start for the second time. Do you still remember what's important? Yeah, at this point, my short-term memory is pretty much Nothing, so oh, maybe we should okay. go over it again. Mm -hmm. It's important that you walk slowly. Mm -hmm. Be conscious. Oh, yeah, okay. If you've got the feeling that it's too hot or you can't take it any longer, don't run. Just leave the track. When it's too hot, just go to the side. Okay? Just go to the side. Feet, toes, don't bend them, otherwise something could get stuck to them. Grab the coals with my toe. Yes, 55 hours without sleep also reduces memory and receptivity. An open fire heats up to 1,000 degrees Celsius. It's way too hot and way too dangerous. But the coals are still glowing at 240 degrees Celsius. One false step and excruciatingly painful burns will be the result. Evil is taking the challenge in a state of exhaustion. The most important thing here, the walking technique. 
Evil's feet should only touch the hot coals for about a half a second. If he walks too fast or too slow, massive burns are the result. Well, here's hoping that the three days of fatigue don't force me to make some sort of mistake and burn the bottom of my feet off. Mission accomplished, but the question remains, with or without burns? No more painful than it was the first time, so I think that we may have found one uh, activity that fatigue doesn't have any impact on. Then again, I haven't checked the bottom of my feet for burns and, and cuts and coal still stuck in them, so who knows? No, they look good. I think we have a winner. We're heading into the third night, and Evil has reached his absolute lowest point. Instead of staying busy, Evil just sits on the sofa. He's lethargic and is battling against falling asleep. Well, one of the hallmarks of extended sleep deprivation is irritability. And yeah, I would guess that I'm feeling pretty irritable, even if I wasn't stuck in a house full of nothing to do for the next five hours. Um, you know, originally, I thought that, uh, you know, gone for a few days not sleeping might have been fun. But this isn't fun. This sucks. This isn't, this isn't remotely fun. It's the opposite. It's actually it, like torture. It is torture. Torture, in fact, specifically forbidden by the Geneva Convention. I don't know what I was thinking. In the meantime, the effects of extreme fatigue are significantly visible in his face. The toughest test yet awaits. It's about strength, endurance, and speed of response. After 86 hours without sleep, Jared is about to step into the boxing ring. Alem Begic, European light heavyweight champ. 11 of the last 12 fights won by knockout, the other by points. This is Evil's opponent. Fresh fighter against a guy that's got over 80 hours of sleep deprivation. That's something you don't see on HBO every week. So I'm probably gonna do pretty horribly. But on the plus side, if you can knock me out, I at least get to sleep on the canvas. A few days ago, the two faced each other in the ring. At that time, Evil was in good shape, rested. And as an avid amateur boxer, a formidable adversary for a European champion, Alem. Light on his feet, quick and responsive. Evil was even able to land a few punches. After a three round bout, victory by points for Alem. On Friday, I might be unconscious before the first round. We're not quite there yet, but Evil is feeling the pain of extreme sleep deprivation. Evil Jared knows too well. This challenge in the name of evil science may hurt like hell real soon. It's pretty clear after the first few seconds how wasted Jared is. His punches are feeble and miss the mark. The body regenerates and refuels during sleep. After almost four days without sleep, these resources, Jared's resources, are completely depleted. While evil can keep his cover for the most part, it's only round one of three. That was, that was a long round. Uh, seems like 10 times longer than the first sight. But I'm still conscious for the time being. Oops. Over the next rounds, Evil's responsiveness fails. 
His frazzled brain cannot process cognitive reactions fast enough. There is an information backlog. The result? Evil can't dodge punches anymore. Or place his cover. Evil is only reactive, not proactive anymore. He tries to get by on his last reserves, and then saved by the bell. As you can see, going to this round, losing even more energy. Uh, not moving fast at all. Jabs, taking forever to get in there. Can't get him to the corner. Wow, well, it's shit. And the win clearly goes to his opponent. Evil Jared scraped together the last smidgens of strength he had left over. He's completely depleted now. I'll tell you what, I'm beat. Veins, brain's broken, muscles are broken. I can barely control my bladder and my bowels. I'm finished. 86 hours is enough for me. This experiment is officially over. I'm going home, I'm going to bed. End of the hunt for knowledge. Evil didn't quite reach the goal of 96 hours straight without sleep, but we were still able to learn how 86 hours without sleep affects the brain and body. It is a most diabolical way. Thank you, Evil. <laughs>